Hey guys, so some of you guys will be familiar with this building at the back of the old Japanese farmhouse. It's just a couple of rooms, but we often use it as a guest house when we have visitors. The only problem we have is that it's actually lower than the main house, which means it's impossible to flow water out of that building into our sewer system. So we haven't been able to put a bathroom in there or anything like that. It's sort of not warranted anyway, really. However, we're having a visitor come soon who's 83 years old and doesn't want to stay in the main house, wants to stay over in this little building and be independent, um, but needs to get up three or four times a night to go to the bathroom. So we've got this little kitchenette thing, which is all very useful. So some of you might remember that project. We just put a water tank in there. And we just run the water from that out into the stormwater drain out the back. And that's not a problem because nothing really serious goes down there. Little fridge there. So it's a great little room. However, because she needs to get up three or four times a night and go to the toilet, uh, we need to try and find a solution for that because she does want to stay in the main house. And it's a bit tough to go outside. There is actually a toilet outside over near the workshop, but... A bit tough to get to so we're looking at options so this day we hadn't got any materials for the job at all it was more of a checking it out sort of situation because had a bit of an idea of what we could do but we needed to check under here because that little front room there and you see there's a wooden support there for the sliding door quite often that results in a stone uh, concrete wall underneath so I sort of suspected it might be a solid concrete wall, which would make the plan that we had sort of not likely to work. So first step was to lift up this floor and have a look under there. Because the other end of the building, we've spent a bit of time, some of you have been with us a while, would have seen a project here where we put that little basin in. That was the other end of the building. So we need to lift this floor up. So the, the nails didn't want to come up. They were really solidly into the beams and, and the heads just kept breaking off. So this seems to be the best solution. Just cut it across and, and just lift, lift a, a board or two up to have a look underneath. So those, those of you who haven't seen what's under a tatami floor, that's usually the case. It's usually not terribly thick board. It doesn't have to take much weight because the tatami sort of spreads most of the weight anyway. And it's usually sort of B-grade, not dressed, fairly sort of rough sort of timber is usually what you find under a tatami floor. So this, <laughs> this isn't a big project, obviously, but uh, it's a 30-minute video. <laughs> so some of you have said on previous videos that you wanted to see more of what happened. So sort of showing you just about every step this time. And, and not speeding it up as much as we normally do either. So it's a pretty long video. You might need to pause it at different times and have rest breaks or <laughs> intervals or something. So this was just to have a look underneath. Wanted to see what was down there. And fortunately, we were right. There, there was actually a solid uh, concrete wall that runs across underneath that beam there. Uh, however, there's a square hole in it about... Mm, foot square sort of thing, 30 centimetres square. So let's have a little peek down there for you. So there's the floor. I'll show you a better look at the floor later. So there's this little hole. Perfect, right? <laughs> Perfect. So that, that fits with the plan. The plan is to run a pipe over to that corner and then across over there into the darkness. So that's the plan. So yes, that was good. That was good news. Okay, good, good, good. So the next step was to run a string line from that board that we just lifted uh, over to the outside at the back of this building. There's a stormwater drain out there. So that area over there we've already lifted before when we did that other project. You can see that kitchen off in the background there. And we ran a, a water pipe from there to the outside to the stormwater drain. Now obviously we're talking about wheeze right getting up three or four times of the night to wee so obviously we don't want to be feeding wee into the storm water drain but the plan is to to put a barrel or, or a, a like a 20 liter container out there because we looked at different options and 
none of the options were really good enough. So what we're doing here is just fishing the, the string. Hey, see that, by the way, see that string? Some of you would have seen like 11 years ago when we were sorting all the rubbish out at the house, we found about something like five kilometers of that string. So no idea why he had so much, but the old man who owned the place had about five kilometers of string. So we use it all the time for all sorts of stuff. And we've still got kilometers of it. So no idea what he was doing with it. So yeah, we did look at all the options. There are special seats. Now, the other problem that we have with this visitor, she's 83 and she has trouble getting up, has trouble standing up. So in her home, she has a special toilet seat that's that's 52 centimeters high and that's high enough that she can stand up more easily and if she sits lower than that she can't get up so when we looked at different options that are available you know you can buy all sorts of frames with sort of basically big potties for adults um, specifically designed for older people or for people that have di sort of dis different disabilities but none of them were suitable they were either too flimsy and wobbly and shaky she was likely to fall over or they're too low so nothing suited. So that's why at this stage we're sort of thinking about, we hadn't bought anything yet, just thinking about the options, what we could do to give her something that would be stable and safe and 52 centimetres high. So haven't bought anything yet. Just got our string and our bits of stick <laughs> and just seeing if we can, we can get our line from where that little room is over to this out, out, outlet here. So this is where we brought that other pipe out. So the plan was to bring another pipe over here. Jerry can was the word I was looking for before. We have these 20 litre jerry cans that we use for kerosene and all sorts of things. So we've got to spare one of those, old one. So the idea is just put that out there. Because all those that's the other problem with all those potty things is you've got to empty them every day and the, you know they sit there and they're full till you empty them and they're really disgusting. So the plan is that we can make something that takes it away outside into a 20 litre container it won't matter if we don't empty it you know for a week we can just leave it for a week she's only coming for a, a, a couple of weeks so it's not going to be a big thing oh i thought you might be curious to have a look under here those of you who haven't seen this already look at this this is normal old buildings like this sit on stumps like that that sit on flat rocks and that's it they're not attached to the flat rock or anything they just sit on top of the flat rock and the pressure's straight down the weight's straight down on the flat rock and that's it that's it. And it works really, really well. It, in earthquakes, the whole thing just sort of wobbles on the rocks. Uh, white ants are a big problem in Japan, getting up and eating the wood. They can't get through the rocks. So it's what they've done for hundreds of years, and they still do it. They still do it with, with some of the old farmhouses and so on. So, yeah, that's what we've got under the tatami floor. So we've got the string running from outside that other little room over to the outside now. So time to move out. There was a really handy little storeroom, that. So <laughs> one of those silly balance balls that was the trend for a while there. <laughs> Hands up who's got one of those in their cupboard. <laughs> Along with your walking machine and your bicycle, indoor bicycle riding machine. So you're starting to get the idea. This is what we're thinking. Put a toilet in there. So I don't want to talk about this too much, the details, but we're making a video about a toilet. You've got to talk about it. The, the plan is the weasel will go out into the bucket and we're just going to have a little container next to it for toilet paper and so on. So obviously that won't go down the pipe. Oh, yeah, just, what, just decided we need a handle and we've got a bunch of these because some of you might remember the old farmhouse had rails like this all the way through the house for the old man and we removed most of them. So we've still got a lot of them just lying around like that. So that one was pretty good, had some glue and stuff on it, So and the screws were a bit loose. So just sort of tightened the screws and gave it a bit of a sanding, make it, made it nice and smooth. Beautiful piece of wood, actually. It's only simple pine or something, but it's, it's a beautiful piece of wood, nice and smooth and round and solid. We've actually put a couple of these up in other parts of the houses and taken it down in other parts of the house. So it's a handy thing to have. So keep in mind, we still haven't spent one yen yet. We're just using materials that we've got lying around the house. So now, tape measure. The old man's tape measure. We've got about 10 different tape measures of different lengths that were left here in the old house. This is his 25 metre one. So we measured out how much hose we need. And then off to the home centre. Now, we had a couple of ideas about this. 
We've seen some of these things before, but this one here, people who have old style Japanese toilets in their homes, it's quite expensive to upgrade to a modern toilet. So what they often do is they'll buy one of these for $50 and just sit it over the top, right? So it's like an instant, instant sit down toilet. So people who've got squat toilets, just buy one of these plastic things for 50 bucks and stick it over the top and suddenly they've got, they've got a sit down toilet, right? It's set on there rated to 100 kilos, so sounds reasonably solid. So then we're in the painting section now, looking at paint containers that people used to paint with, right? Put their paint in while they're painting stuff. That one's too small. <laughs> it's like a puzzle, isn't it? What's this bit for? That'll do. Three dollars, right? So we've spent fifty-three dollars so far. That's the other thing. Those other options are really expensive. Oh, at this stage, the masks are still mandatory, by the way. So that's why. So a couple of pieces here we're going to need. That was about a couple of bucks each. So up to about fifty-eight dollars. And then the hose. Yeah, the hose was a funny one. They sell hose by ten centimeter segments, right? You gotta watch that. You gotta watch. I've made that mistake once before. Thought it was by the meter, and no, it's not. So twenty-five yen. So it's about twenty-five cents. But it says here it's for ten centimeters. It's not for a meter. It's for ten centimeters. So that's twenty. Uh, what's that? Two dollars fifty for a meter, and I need ten meters. So that's twenty-five bucks. And that's twenty-one. That's better. That's better than twenty-five. That's 12 or 13. 13, that's even better, right? That's better again. So, yeah, we'll have that one, thanks. That was the cheapest one. So what have we spent so far? Uh, $70. $70 so far. So now just sort of working it out. How's that going to sit? So we could have left out lots of these bits and sped it up even more. So it's really going on a bit, isn't it? No doubt some people will be taking intervals already and other people would have given up totally and gone and done something else. <laughs> Go watch another two-minute YouTube video. <laughs> so, hole in the bottom of that flimsy plastic container. It's pretty flimsy. Paint container, so it slopes, which is what we want. So it's the right shape, exactly the right shape for what we want. Just It's a little bit thin and flimsy, but that doesn't matter. It's not going to leak. It's made for paint. So a little hole in there. And then check the fittings. Yeah, it's going to fit. So the inside fitting is a little bit too high. It's a couple of centimetres high. We don't need that. So we need to cut it down so it only stands up a couple of mil. Cut that off. Smooth it off. Some of that plumber's tape. Makes a good seal. And then loads of silicon. <laughs> We'd usually use plumber's glue on something like this as well, but in this case, not really important. Plumber's tape and then the loads of silicon. Really don't want it to leak. And do it up tight. And then leave it alone for a couple of days because we've got other things to do. <laughs> so obviously these jobs are all part-time jobs, you know, in amongst the real work and the real things. It's like a few hours here and a few hours there. So yeah, smooth it off. And leave it alone for a couple of days, it'll be fine. And then off to the shed. So, some of you would remember, 11 years ago, we had a whole huge room full of timber. 
and slowly we've used it for all sorts of projects and things. We've used up lots of the materials. We had a bit, huge room full of materials 11 years ago that were just here when we moved in. So slowly we've sort of used it for all sorts of stuff. So same thing again. Remember there was a few boards. Just need two that are about the same width or height or depth, depending which way you're looking at it. <laughs> width. <laughs> two the same width. Yep, that'll do. That looks about right. So you can probably see these things are sort of, these projects are made up as we go along, really. <laughs> there's no, there's sort of a rough, rough idea at the beginning and then it's sort of ad-libbing, you know. What do we want to do with this? Want well, to sort of wide enough to be stable. Stable's really important, obviously. We don't want 83-year-old lady falling over at three o'clock in the morning or something so we want it wide enough to be stable but don't want it to be bulky or difficult to use or sit on so i decided to taper it back keep it wide but taper it back keep the plastic on it keep it clean might as well Yeah, that's hollow. Didn't know that. <laughs> Look at that. It's hollow. No idea. <laughs> Thought it was solid. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter for what we're going to do with it. But yeah, a bit surprised. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> What's that? The other one's solid. The other one was solid. That saw was here 11 years ago too, you know, and the same blade in it and just been using that, all the projects you've got, you guys have watched where it's involved cutting with a saw. <laughs> same saw and same blade. It's amazing. Just about every tool you see in any of these projects was here when we moved in. We bought very few tools. Yeah, that side up's better. A bit of thinking goes on here. <laughs> There's more thinking goes on when the camera's off, you know. So I finish part of the job and then go off to work and do other things. And, you know, 20 minutes in the car here and there thinking about this. Okay, what's the best thing? What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? Don't want it to move, right? Obviously, that, that would be a disaster, wouldn't it? Three o'clock in the morning, the slips off the board or something. So marking it, and the plan is to put, to keep it sort of neat, put stoppers inside rather than outside. So you put stoppers all the way around it, couldn't you? But just to keep it neat. Oh, the other thing is we've got to get the 52 centimetres. If it's too low, she can't get up off it. So apparently the, the one that she uses, it's just right, is 52 centimetres. So we need to go a bit higher. It's not high enough. So we need another... 10 or 12 centimetres, I think it was. So legs, need four legs, 10 or 12 centimetres high. It's awesome, isn't it? It doesn't matter what we need. It, just about everything we need is there. You know, oh, I need a piece about that size. There it is. <laughs> All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. There's a little, we needed a little, what do you call it? Like a little elbow or a little, uh, little bracket. You'll see later on in the project, you know, a little bracket. Yeah, sure enough. The good thing about tidying up the house was that we'd learnt where all these things were and sort of put them together in sort of a system so we know where everything is and sort of seen everything at different times when tidying up, you know, little brackets and little, all sorts of little things. So sort of we know what we've got, which is useful. That blade wasn't quite big enough, was it? Oh, this is silly, isn't that silly? A drop saw would be really good about there. <laughs> Holding the end of it, 10 centimetres. All right, that's done. And now we need some other bits. Look at this. Oh, yeah, we need some bits. Actually, these are leftovers from a job that we, we did actually buy the wood. That was from the, the room next door. Some of you remember we sealed up the old pickle room. These were cutoffs. It's always worth keeping your cutoffs. You never know. We'll need them to support the legs.
So putting the legs underneath, see the stoppers on the toilet? See the underside of the toilet? You can see stoppers there. So I decided to put the legs underneath them. Didn't really matter, but the thinking was the weight would go straight down through the legs then. Doesn't really matter, could put them all to the outside corners or whatever, but just decided no, no need for that. Under the, under the stoppers will do, put the weight straight down through the legs. So partly for support to keep the legs all square and straight, but they're pretty they're sh pretty short and fat, so they're not going to need much support. But the thinking was put some ply across to keep everything square and straight and stop any wobbling. And also aesthetically too, it's going to look a bit better because it's got the bits across the bottom. Oh, that little piece I'm putting on there, that'll that will become relevant later. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, we might need a piece there, a bit more substantial. And now putting these little little blocks inside where the toilet's going to sit, so that to stop the toilet moving. So just scrap, just picking up scrap from from the from the workshop and screwing sc scrap into place. Basically, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do, just to stop it moving. Boom, boom. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. No, it's good. And actually later on, you'll see we found some little rubber stoppers. Don't know what they were from, bottles or something, that were actually better than those bits of wood, so we, we used those as well. So just four long screws going down through into the legs. All the weight's going to be down pretty much, so... Here's the paint, the paint store, pure white, external, uh, doesn't matter, <laughs> doesn't matter, there's no rule, no rule says you can't use external paint internally, and an old brush, hey, that'll do. So again, just aesthetics, just to make it look, you know, a little bit more acceptable, a little bit less dodgy, <laughs> a little bit less like it's made from random bits of scrap with no planning gone into it at all. <laughs> See that white wall to the right of the picture there? That's, that's been painted with leftover bits of paint. So if there's a little bit left in a tin, like it was after this job, a little bit left in the bottom of the tin and some paint on the brush, instead of throwing it away, just um, that, wa that wall over there get, got slowly painted bit by bit. Because it's sort of a waste. It's a workshop. Don't need to paint the walls. But instead of throwing away you know, a bit in the bottom of the tin or, or washing the paint out of the brush slowly painting that wall in that workshop so now just working out if it's hollow where we want to go where's the hollow bit with this little little drill bit yep that's hollow got the big drill bit okay yeah that's pretty good there was a beam about four centimeters underneath the hole which is a bit of a pain but with the plan in mind it's not going to be a big problem yeah 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 that's going to fit Yep, yep, yep. Got the five kilometres of string. Not just that roll, by the way. We've got about three or four rolls, just like that. <laughs> Ridiculous. So fed the string down and then got a, a pole with a hook on the end of it and hooked the string and then tied it to the other string that we'd already run out the back and pulled it up. So now we have a string running from that hole there all the way to the outside. So just easier to work with string in a circumstance like that rather than the hose itself. Much easier to hook string and to pull it where you want it to go and then tape it onto the end of the hose and then just pull it through using the string. Could have done with two people at this stage. <laughs> it's like trying to feed it and pull it at the same time, a bit fiddly. And then this got more fiddly because I'm out the back here pulling the string through and then go feed a bit of the hose. Because you, if you feed all the hose down, it's going to get knotted. So feed down a couple of metres, pull it through. Feed down a couple of metres, pull it through. Because if you push it all down through that hole and you've got 10 metres of hose down underneath the floor, it'll get all knotted up and you'll never get it through. So there we go. That worked. We're through. Fabulous. 
So the idea is when we're actually in action, that 20 litre jerry can is just going to sit in that drain because it's only for a couple of weeks. So a 20 litre jerry can is going to sit there and collect all the all the wheeze and probably, you know, once a day throw a litre of water down just to flush it through. So I sit it back in the corner. So again, would usually use plumber's glue, but might need to pull this apart later and clean it and, and put it away somewhere, you know, because we're not going to leave it there forever. It's only going to be there for a couple of weeks. So the decision was made to just feed that hose into that. It's really tight fit into that fitting. It's a really tight fit. Obviously experimented with that in the home center before we bought the hose. So I knew it was a tight fit. So, okay, it's pretty tight. And that container is not going to move because it's going to have the toilet sitting on top of it. So we just don't want the hose to move. So silicon it up. Just in case. <laughs> Again, don't want it leaking. I'll oh, see that see the little red stopper there in the back corner? Perfect. Don't know what, what that came from, but this is a perfect thing. Two of those really stop it moving oh that's an old uh paint paint roller thing thing oh whatever you call that so just for double safety going to leave that underneath this thing just in case there is any leaks paint tray roller paint roller tray that's what it is all right toilet goes down on top click it actually sits really nicely on those stoppers very nicely and then little bracket there's that little bracket i needed a bracket just that size went looking there it was in the container of brackets <laughs> it's perfect so one of those just to stop the hose moving so now the container can't move and the hose can't move and then got a couple of really long screws and put them through the base of the toilet into the wooden wooden base to really stop it moving because just don't want it moving don't want the don't want the lady falling off at three o'clock in the morning or something like that. So that's it now. A couple of big screws in it and all those stoppers, it, it's not going to move. So put it back into place, feed the rest of the hose down the hole. Oh yeah, so she reckons she can, if it's 52 centimetres high, she can stand up without, without a, a handle, without something to hold on to. But, you know, just because we already have them lying around and there happens to be a beam right there, big solid beam, it just seems to be a clever thing to do or a smart thing to do just to give that extra bit of support. And again, this is held up by eight solid screws, so it's really solid. And we weight tested it to 97 kilos. <laughs> and the toilet. So the toilet and the rail have been weight tested to 97 kilos. Oh, that's one of those blue disinfectant things you throw in the toilet we're going to throw that in there later oh, that's a nappy bucket there on the left so it's got a little sealed lid so it keeps the smells in so just going to leave that there for bits of toilet paper or whatever else has to be thrown in there so time to test it Yep, so, had a look underneath, no leaks, fabulous. Conveniently, you can open that window there and look straight underneath, that's really good. Went out the back and checked it, yep, running out the hose. So that's that container, just going to stick the hose into the container, it'll feed into there, 20 litres, so, you know, once a week, take that and empty it into the outside toilet. So, that's the solution we came up with, should work reasonably well bit more comfort for the lady than having to go outside or whatever and much better than any of the other options that we could see as far as comfort and 
sturdiness and safety and stability and everything else. So that was an epic marathon video, wasn't it? <laughs> hope somebody found that mildly amusing. The two of you who are still watching <laughs> more videos coming soon.